All right, so we have a fun one today. I'm going to show you guys this cool comic book shading, cell shading, tune shading, whatever you want to call it, material in Blender. It's super easy to put together and super quick, so let's dive right into it. Okay, cool. So we have a completely fresh scene. Just our models are in here. If you're wondering, uh, these models came. The skull model came from Blender Kit. It's a free add-on. I highly suggest installing it. And then this little sci-fi box came from some asset pack on the Blender market. But again, this isn't really a modeling tutorial, so we're going to skip past all of that and jump right into the materials. The magic of what we're doing, this comic book shading look, all happens in the material section, and it's super easy. So let's just grab our skull here and add a new material and then pop over into our shading tab. So we have our principal BSDF here and our material output. All we need to do is add two nodes. We are first going to add a shader to RGB node. And then we're going to shift A and add a color ramp. Boom. All right. So nothing has happened here yet because what we need to do is tell the color ramp to actually operate uh, in constant, not linear. And now we have a solid black skull, which is totally not what we're looking for. But you'll notice that if we actually start playing with the cider here, we now are getting something that looks a little bit more comic booky. All right. So if we hop back in the layout and turn on our real render view, we can see that we have this solid black skull. Uh, the reason for that is we haven't introduced any lights into the scene. By the way, for anyone wondering, this is all happening in Eevee. So let's add some lights. We can add a point light and bring that up. Kind of put it into position. We're going to have to make it a lot stronger. So let's start off with like a thousand. There we go. The other thing too that you want to do is in your light section for every light you add, you want to turn off shadow. If you don't turn off shadow, you can actually start getting some real, some weird shading uh, in the model itself. So we're going to leave shadow off. Right now, we have our one light in here and what we really just want to do is apply our shader to the rest of our materials. So the way that we can do that is grab all of the rest of our, our, our models over here and then select our skull and then hit control L and then we can link the materials. And now the materials are all linked. So if we change the skull by jumping over here, if we change this, we'll change everything. It's actually looking pretty cool. And this is, this is really the effect. Um, you're going to just spend a lot of time dialing in your lighting and you can play over here with these, sh these sliders. The other cool thing that you can do is you can actually add in color. So if I just add another point to the color ramp, we can actually change the color. So now we can add red or whatever you want to your, uh, to your render. I think right now I don't want the white in there, so I can just select the white flag and then come over here to the minus section, click that, and now we just have red and black, which looks pretty cool. The other thing that I did was I put this frame right here. This is just a plane that has uh, an inset put into it and then deleting out that middle face. And I was thinking that this would kind of act as um, the panel from a, like a comic book. Um, if you've ever read a comic book or a graphic novel, they usually have a border around the, the frame itself. Uh, this, we're actually going to add a different material to it because we don't want it to have black and red. We want this to just be solid weight. And the way that we're going to do that is make sure you're selected on it, hit new, jump over into your shading. And then just like before, here, let's change this. And just like before, we do want to add those two nodes. So again, shader to RGB and then a color ramp. Make that constant. And then the only difference here is this black flag here at the end. We're gonna take that and make it white. And so now it'll be solid white no matter what the light is doing to it. Cool, so we're most of the way done. The other trick here is to kind of get that shading outline going. Um, and the way that we do that is by adding a grease pencil object 
Uh, and we actually want to select scene line art. And now, just through that, you can see that it's added some lines here to kind of help give that comic book effect. The only thing to note here is that you won't see this line work in, unless you're looking at it through your main camera. So like if I break the view here, you'll see that my line work stayed with the front because that's, you can see right here, that's where my camera is looking at the object from. So if we jump back into our camera view, you can see that our line work is right there. So if we were to move the camera, like if we came into view and then checked uh, camera to view and then looked around this way, you'll notice that our line work actually stays with the object. But I will just let you know that doing it that way is actually fairly taxing on your computer, so you may not want to work in that way. So the other thing that we can do is select our line art here, and if we actually go into this little tab right here, it's the grease pencil properties, and then we go to strokes down here, it may be closed for you, you can actually mess with the line thickness. So we can bring it up, make these really thick lines, or we can drop that down to like 0.7 and they're really thin. I think I like them a little bit thicker. I think I liked it probably at one. You know what? No, let's try three. Too thick. Two. Yeah, we'll work with that. I want to, I don't want it to be this, that have this much red. So there's a couple ways to dial this in. We can either come back to our initial shader and add another flag and take it to the end. And you can see that we actually start having black show up here. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think I like that. But the other thing that you can do is play around with your lighting setup. So we have our point light. And if I move that, again, the shading is reactive to wherever the lighting is. That's cool. I just want something that's going to give me enough details for this to read as a skull. We can also duplicate our lights. Like if we wanna show some more over here, we can bring one over here and light up the other side. That's kinda cool actually. Yeah, I like that. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here is actually add in a little bit of grease pencil by hand to try and uh, put in more of like a, like a dot like mm, like a dotting effect or a cross hatching effect, just to to make it feel more like this was hand drawn and not uh, just generated through our materials. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna actually add. Come up here to add and then select your grease pencil tab. And then we're just gonna add a stroke and it's gonna put a stroke down here. And we actually, this is gonna sound weird. We actually wanna go into edit mode, select all that and delete it. And then we'll just delete the strokes. But now what we can do is we can go into draw mode. And this will allow us to draw strokes wherever we want them on our object. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is you can see that as I turn it, my stroke is way out here, even though from our camera view, it looks like it's dead on to our model. The one thing that we want to do or check is in up here, we're telling Blender we want to draw on the surface. Um, and it, I don't think it defaults to this. I think it's like origin or 3D cursor. So make sure you come up here and hit surface. But this number right here is the offset and that's what's determining how far our line is away from our item or our model. So if we come back to offset and we make that like zero and draw, you'll see it actually gets lost a little bit into our model and it's, it's right there. It's right on the surface. So we want a little bit of an offset, but the default offset might be too strong. So let's make this like 0 0.004 draw. And you can see it's right there. It's not blending into the model, but it's also not floating out into the middle of space. So I like that. I'm just gonna come in here and kind of put little lines 
where I feel like I want them. You can also change the radius. Oops. I'm going to undo those. Change that radius. Make it a little smaller. Let's make it like 48. There we go. We're just putting in lines wherever we think makes sense. I'm actually doing this with my mouse, so right now my line isn't super precise. You can actually help that out a little bit by coming to stroke and making sure that your smoothing is up. So if we have it down to zero, we'll see every little imperfection in my line. And if we turn it up to one, it kind of smooths it out a little bit. This is all just up to personal preference. Another thing that I like to do is actually come in here and um, put some like dots in with the grease pencil. I think it just kind of helps distinguish things a little bit. All right. Anyway, you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do this for the next 20 minutes. That's that's all it is. That's our comic book shading effect. You can obviously take this and push this further again by adding in more colors. You know, by coming back to your flag. And add in that white if you want. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, that's how you do it. If you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.